Hello friends, welcome. I'm your friend, your host Roy. We are talking about series one where we are discussing real numbers. Today is episode number 70. We are going to discuss about proving irrational numbers. We are going to continue that. We started that in the last video. We are going to continue that in this presentation. Now, so friends, what kind of uh, irrational numbers we are going to prove? So we are going to prove something like, uh, how do we know that 5 square root 3 is an irrational number or let us say maybe 1 by square root 7 is an irrational number. In the last video we saw how we can prove square root 2 is an irrational number, square root 5 or square root 11 these are irrational numbers. In today's presentation we are going to multiply a, a rational number times uh, irrational number. In this case, we have a square root 2 multiplied by 5. And here we have the square root uh, 7, which is 1 divided by square root 7. In this presentation, we are going to find out how we can prove these type of numbers are irrational numbers. Now, friends, it's important to recall that from the last class, first series, we have discussed at length about what are rational numbers, what are irrational numbers. And we have gone into great detail to prove that each of these type of numbers are indeed irrational numbers. We are just going to prove that using a different technique in this presentation. Now, one point to note, friends, is that our strategy will be to get the square root, the square root number on one side of the equation all by itself. This is going to be a strategy as we go ahead and prove it. So you may be wondering, what do I mean by that? And you will see that in just a minute. So let us say we want to prove that 5 square root, let's say 5 square root 3. We want to prove that 5 square root 3, 5 multiplied by square root 3 is an irrational number. How do we do that? So we are going to actually do exactly what we did in the last video, where we will assume how about 5 square root 3 is actually a rational number that is we can express 5 square root 3 in terms of p by q because we know any rational number can be expressed in the form of p by q so let us assume why don't we assume that 5 square root 3 is a rational number then we can actually divide both sides by 5 and why do we want to divide both sides by 5 because remember our strategy we are trying to get rid of this 5 so I want to divide both sides by 5. So what do I have? If I do that, then I have here square root 3 equal to p divided by 5 times q. Now, you recall in the first place, what are p and q? p and q are nothing but they are integers. So p is an integer, q is an integer. So q must not be equal to 0. But they are regular integers, right? So, if q is any integer, then if I multiply that integer with 5, then what do I get? I get another integer. So, p by q is nothing but I have one integer in the numerator, right? And then I have another integer in the denominator. And we know because q is not equal to 0, so 5q is also not equal to 0. So, what I have is square root 3 is nothing but integer divided by integer where this is not equal to 0. It means what? It means this is just a rational number. So, we know that we have square root 3 that should be a rational number. But wait a minute. We actually know that square root 3 is an irrational number. So, why do we have square root 3 equal to rational number? We got this because we made an inaccurate assumption that 5 square root 3 is a rational number. Because we made wrong assumption, we came to the conclusion that square root 3 is rational, which is actually false. So, indeed, 5 square root 3 is an irrational number. So, let us see how do we actually write it. So, the way we write it is that, let us assume 5 square root 3 is a rational number. We can express 5 square root 3 as p by q where both p, q are integers. So, we can say 5 square root 3 equals p by q, right? Then, 
we want to divide both sides by 5 we get 5 square root 3 divided by 5 equal to p by q divided by 5 or 5 5 will cancel out 5 and 5 cancels out that is the whole point so we have square root 3 equal to p divided by 5 times q now why did we divide both sides by 5 remember the important strategy that we had discussed earlier we because we want to have the square root number on to one side of the equation all by itself so here i want to make sure because my term is 5 square root 3 i am trying to have square root 3 all by itself on one side why you will see in just a moment the reason i want to have 5 square root 3 on one side is so after i have square root 3 equals to p divided by 5 q since p and q are integers q not equal to 0 so it follows that 5 q is also an integer so p by 5 q is also a rational number so root 3 square root 3 is equal to p by 5 q so because this is a rational number so square root 3 is a rational number see the reason why i wanted to have the square root term all by itself is because i wanted to get to this point i want to prove that the square root term is a rational number because i know that is not correct so we want to make sure that the square root term is all by itself on one side of the equation and here we see square root 3 actually is a rational number which we know absolutely is not correct because this contradicts the fact that square root 3 actually is an irrational number it means our assumption what is our assumption that 5 square root 3 is a rational number our assumption is wrong so 5 square root 3 is an irrational number so it's important to note friends that if you had something like maybe 2 square root 7. So what we are going to do in that case is if we assume this is equal to p by q, we want to then divide both sides by what? Both sides by 2. Because our goal is to basically get rid of this number, whatever is in front of the square root term. So if it is 2, in this case I divide both sides by 2 and I go on in exactly the same manner. Right? Now let's take a look at what if our term is something like maybe let's say 1 divided by square root 7. So in this case a square root term is in the denominator. So how do we go about it? We are going to do it exactly the same way. We are going to assume that this is actually a rational number and then we can express this in the form of p by q. Right? And then what will we do? Then we are going to actually take the square root 7 on this side. So we essentially we are going to take this number over here and we are going to take this number over here so we can rearrange this to write if square root 7 goes this side you will end up having square root 7 equal to then q will come on the top q by p right now again q and p are rational p q and p are integers and here i have so i've got q and p where they are both integers so this is a rational number so again exactly by getting the square term on one side square root term on one side we notice that square root 7 equals to you know q by p which is a rational number because they are both integers and but we know that square root 7 is not a rational number so our assumption that 1 by square root 7 is a rational number is wrong so similarly friends if you were given let us just say that to make it interesting if you had given like 17 by 2 square root 3 you know prove that this is a rational number you will again do the exact same thing your goal is to get square root 3 all by itself right so how will we do that we will assume this is equal to p by q it's our, going back to a strategy we have to make sure that we put this all by itself on one side of the equation so in this case how will we do it first of all we are going to you know get square root 3 on this side so we will have 17 multiplied by q 17 multiplied by q divided by the p will come here we divided by 2p now because q is an integer this is an integer so this 17 times q will be an integer some integer we don't know what it is and 2 times p will be another integer and we don't know what it is but essentially we have an integer in the numerator integer in the denominator so this is a rational number 
So I have square root 3 as a rational number, but we again know this is not a rational number. So our assumption that this actually is a rational number or this is a rational number is wrong and hence this is actually an irrational number. So friends, in the next video, we are going to take a look at some of these kind of proofs. How do we prove that 5 plus 2 square root 3 is an irrational number or 7 minus 10 square root 5 is an irrational number. This is what we are going to see in our next video.